Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? And welcome to Final Circle. I am your host, Yeso, and we're here to look back at what we saw in Series E this past week. Now, for those of you who are new, you may be wondering, well, what exactly is Series E? It's pretty simple. Series E is a professional Apex Legends open circuit that absolutely anyone can join. We have nine squads that made it through our open qualifiers and have been drafted and signed by our nine partner brands. These players now make $750 a month salary as well as compete weekly for points and prize money against other open squads on Tuesday nights and against the top pro teams from across North America and Europe every single Wednesday. If you and your squad like what you hear and want to get in on the action yourselves, make sure to head over to matcharino.com slash ESA for a shot at being a future Series E Pro. Now, I touched on the schedule there. Just keep it in mind. Our schedule is every Tuesday night, kicking off our pre-show at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. And every Wednesday for Pro Night, we start at 2.30 Pacific with our pre-show. You're not going to want to miss out. Now, this week in Series E was Intel Week, and we started off with Open Night on Tuesday. We had 11 open squads joining our nine partner teams to duke it out four points on World's Edge. Let's see how things shook out here in Open Night. Taken out by Pop Tarts' is Lucas from the high ground here, but here's Team Pringles getting sent on in their building. They've got the PK in hand. They will just shut down this squad uh, of. Um of this spot. It, was, it looks like it was NPL that took this. Now, with this fight uh, taking place here on the Northeast, though, Nestle trading away. It's going to be Lonely Fans coming in for a double kill. All wipe out of them. Team Razor, this is their opportunity to try to get in, and they will be able to take that. Serial gets that knock, and here they go. Pushing forward. Team Razor in the 3v2. Now, Gating. I think for a second time here. And there's the... Oh, it is absolute man monarchy, actually. I thought that was one player from Lonely Fans. That's Fat Fruit Ninja. Got knocked originally, survives throughout all of this. We'll see if he can wrap this out to a top two. And if he can pick up any kill points here, but it looks like Team Razor are just picking apart Team Pringles. And now they drop down. Fat Fruit Ninja did get finished off. Just they brought all of this right now because of the looming threats of both squads now. As you have uh, Pony holding down the northern side, he does have the PK. So if it, if it comes down to a close range engagement, he will take that one. If you have an emergency, um, emergency jump pad just in case taking the skies crispy gate bacon gets the first knock and they will be able to secure the thirst as well now it's going to come down to just apple jacks pushing it here it's going to be a 3v2 for apple jacks up against team pringles you can see they're instantly jumping on them they see the trades and they know that they have this one there go but also doesn't do this blind aggression as we take a look at draco's getting in the first little skirmish over here for team Nessie splash is this pop tarts in front of them? I maybe trying to get some revenge from game number two there. Ronnie taking a lot of damage as he backs away. And here we go. Draco's going for a second try. And it is going to be Team Pop Tarts. Impulse gets taken out. And it looks like it might have been the same thing here. Lucas does find one, trading it back. It's down to a 2v2. NPL has almost no HP left as Draco's will go down. It's all up to Ronnie. And it looks like this is some retribution from game number two. That's why they call it 50 50. Roddy with the shots, though. It's not over quite yet. Let's see if he gets the scan and gets any more information on the player. Dropping down. Oh. He hits the shots. One more shot will do it for Roddy, and he does it. Going number three. Barring a throw here. If they fight this one out, 1v1v1. One one one. But it looks like they are going to go for the full three man peak to finish it off that building there are too many teams around for them to try to full commit onto that one team cheese it felt they have made their way past it looks like team applejacks into frag east there's a caustic in their way and they've lost out on two it's all up to rack and issue left in a 1v2 i believe he goes for the peak gets the knock and he finishes wow. them off rack and Ishu, that penis kit goes off and now you can see Crispy Bacon is the only one alive for his squad team. Lonely fans clearing out the south side now, slowly walking in. Blueberry Smalls takes to the sky with that gravity lift. We hit uh, top three here. Flight will try and fully heal up and hold the line, hold the, the phone. Here comes the full 3v3. Lonely fans now will be able to finish wow. this one up. There's a defensive bombardment right there. While that comes down, they're also going to be bubbling as well because Team Razor is directly in the middle. So there it is. Six is going to take to the sky. You can see Panthers again takes initial damage, but they want to play the opposite side of the eggshell here. Now the defensive bombardment's down. They can just take this straight up 3v3. There's the black hole. Yeah, they are. 
are trying to back away from it right now. They do clear it. It's going to be, looks like a trade, but Team Razor. Though he's taking a lot of damage over towards the side. That's going to be Lonely Fans coming through. That's going to be three teams all coexisting on this building. And now he's going to get out of there with a double bounce pad. Blueberry is going to go down. Metro is going to be the one that answers with the Spitfire. Immediate res there onto Pander. Six is covering this one. And now it's a two versus one. Nice damage there with the triple take and the Helen as well. Looking to pitch this squad up. But Maze gets some decent damage off with that R99. Continuing to lay on the pressure onto this squad with the bubble forward. He's underneath. Should be able to find some decent damage here. PK shot does not connect through that shield, but we get a kill. It's a trade though. Two, two for one. Six XZs trying to keep moving in for the killing blow. But no, they got pushed. Team Pringles are in this as well, I believe. Inside the diner, you have the defensive environment, so all the fighting is going to be taking place inside on the second floor as they lose out on one. Here comes Six with the flank, and he's all lost out, maybe on Panders as well. Team Pringles making the push out onto Panders. Six not able to connect with the EVA 8 shots, does get that knock. Now he's dropped down to about 130 HP, and this is going to mean Six XZs coming in for the finish here. They know, they saw the trades, but Team Intel will be able to secure top two at the very least. Six now left down in a 1v3, getting hunted down. And Team Intel, they had a pretty crazy game number six. They got a lot of kills, but they won't be able to finish it off. It's Tons of great action we got to see there on Tuesday night. And Team Razor was the squad that did end up on top, winning, in fact, their second open night title in a row. It seems like Team Razor is starting to round back into form. Meanwhile, Team Intel, who is playing in their sponsored week, weren't able to crack the top three, but still had a strong showing to finish the night and certainly built some momentum heading into Wednesday. Now we can check out our open team standings here, and it is Team Lonely Fans still sitting at the top. An impressive gap for them as they are fighting for a spot in season three. If they can continue to hold on to first place there, they will have a spot in our next season of play. So they're certainly feeling strong and continuing to rack up points. Now jumping forward to Wednesday night, Team Razor was hoping to carry some momentum from their win the night prior. We also got to see the debut of the new Renegades roster on Pro Night. Certainly an exciting thing to watch and Team Intel was hoping to build off some positives from their Tuesday night performance. Bronzy survives throughout all of this, and here comes the scan. TSM smell blood in the water, and they jump right on in. Bronzy gets thirsted. Imperial Hal will be able to finish this one off with the rest of TSM. But Intel now coming in, and it is just a huge pile on of all the teams oh, left no. basically in this lobby. Intel getting some great damage off that flatline with the uh, with a 3x and the purple mag as they get the first knock onto Imperial Hell, but oh no, six has gone down. Metro finds one more onto reps and they will be able to take out TSM. Had a lot of damage going down onto Team Intel, and you can see the timing right there. Zone starts closing as they get him back into the game. Now it's just a matter of time. KSZ with the 2v3 once more. They've got the circle advantage. They've got the, well, it's the low ground, but they have to jump into them here. And you can see Six trying his best with the moon, but he gets shot out of the sky. It will be KSZ here on the south on board with Applejack as they were able to get Duke back on in, but they instantly get pushed after that res. Duke doesn't even have any armor yet, goes into a pill to try to find anything. But it looks like Applejacks are able to just swap this push down. Nasky is the first one to fall on the side of Underrated and the beautiful Ooh. spray out from Aves to get a They're just biding their time. Patience here from TSM as they're maybe looking to find some kills on the KSZ. Cracked armor there from Hal. Good work going to get the knock, just shredding through 303. Falls as well, and here it goes as the bubble goes down. Nocturnal going for the res. Everybody coming in for the push here. There's the defensive bombardment, and here we go, folks. Yeah, they're pushing out as Bronzy has gone down. Charlotte Phoenix <laughs> losing out on so many. Our Lily will fall to snipe down. Flaker, what is going on? But here it is, as you can see, it's gonna be KSZ as a full three. They've got some decent cover actually with this uh, lifeline care package being dropped down, but Zach pushes in by himself, but KSZ have done it. It's a lot of damage going down across Aves as well. And he even utilizes the Q, loses out on more. Crummy gets the first knock. Dupe answers back before he goes down with that defensive bombardment. It's also Rollers here with the Mastiff. Pulls out that triple take for the last kill, but can he get it? No, Rockstar will be able to survive, but they lose out on 
squads left. The cereal is going for the push, lands a beautiful thermite, gets inside of the bubble. Meanwhile, this octane just running for his life, and it is Team Pringles that cereal has stumbled upon and able to finish them off. Cereal, great work here. So here comes the black hole. Team Intel looking for the finish. They're pushing in. Now the bubble has been utilized on the other side, and Six thinks better of it. Baits them out, has the high ground angle, goes for the peak, but they've taken so much damage, and it looks like Team Liquid might be able to win this out. No, Intel are able to hold on, but here comes a third-party push from Razor. It's down to a 2v2 with the HP advantage. These teams, Pop-Tarts stuck in size. You can see the silence being utilized on them as well. And that's gonna mean no scans. They go in for the rotate. Impulse taking a lot of damage as he tries to get out of dodge. It's gonna be TSM dropping down to get that knock onto stomps. Pop-Tarts are knocked out. We've hit top four. It's all full squads. Top three now. Never mind. Top two. <laughs> so we do have, it looks like, underrated going in for that death blow. Will they be able to punish them? Snipe down does go down. It's down to a 3v2 as they push up. The hammer points are here for underrated. They get the knock on to Imperial House. The 1v2 reps is the only one alive for TSM. Horizon will go ahead and heal up with that bat and underrated. Full set coming out from Intel now. They got the wrong building, unfortunately for them. Defensive bombardment will be used by Metro, but TSM did get the res. They're healing up, they're buying time. It looks like the defensive bombardment actually working against them. Do you have the Watson in there? Do they have the interception pylon? It doesn't look like it. No, they get it up in time as they are looking to finish them off. Decent damage off of Metro. Overpeaking this one. It's the full push out from TSM. Snipe down gets the knock. It's going to come down to a 1v2 now. 1v1. We'll see if Intel can take them out. And they do. The bounce of the port to get out. And they're trying to wait for as long as possible. As you can see now, full commit coming out as Team Intel will drop down with the bubble. Metro has that Prowler. Swaps on over to the EVA 8. The knock goes down onto Vax. And it's just Intel who have not lost a member quite yet. Looking full healthy. And this might be their first win of the evening. Pop-Tarts wipe out CLG and Team Intel. There's the scan. Panders is ca uh, caught on that one. The climb up and the arc start connect onto Panders. Black hole last second and he does survive. The bubble is there from Metro as well. What a beautifully timed bubble for them as Tease it try to go for the full push. It's actually going to be Panders. Uh, needs to hold the line now as Metro will fall. Prodigy Ace picking up too. It's down to the 1v1. Panders has full HP on his oh. shield though. And they clutch up. Team Intel are still in it. All seven squads left. It's all full healthy squads as well. As uh, Zach Major now pushing in from the outside. It is Team Intel on the other side of this one. This could just be the end of it all here. As you can see. The standoff between both squads. Thermite down from Zach Mazer onto that door. Doesn't quite connect here. He does land in some shots and he gets the knock onto six. We have the gravity lift to try and block the door, but it's the full send coming out from KSZ. No frags answered back from Team Intel. And now KSZ take them out enough to take away from Team Intel, that first place spot on the overall leaderboards. RKT now trying to make a push onto Team Liquid. They got climbed on. Bird got caught unawares, but Albert Laley will fall. Defensive bombardment does go down from uh, one of the squads. It might be KSZ to push this one out. Can RKT recover here? RKT pick up another kill onto Nocturnal. KSZ as a two-man pushing onto Rice Krispy Trees as they get the kill onto Stunny. And in this final 2v2, KSZ should have done enough to secure the win. They need to just get this win just to have a lot more breathing room here. Naughty down to a 1v2 as Pistillo goes for that push. Thermite in as they get the push down and it's going to be RKT to take the Wednesday night ended up being one of the most exciting nights of the season, as you could clearly tell from that highlight reel. KSZ does come out on top, and the crazy thing is it all came down to the final game. Team Intel went into it with a lead, and they ended up running into each other in that final game. KSZ did come out on top in the fight and on the leaderboard, grabbing first place in Pro Night. And this was the first time since week number two that we have seen a team able to top 
TSM on Pro Night. So some new things coming out here on a Wednesday night, but still an impressive performance from Team Intel as we check out now our partnered team standings. And things starting to get really tight between third and seventh place. There isn't even 100 points separating these squads. If Team Applejacks or Team Cheez-Its has a down week, there is a huge opportunity for the likes of Team Razor, Team Rockstar, or Team Intel to jump into the running to make it to season three. Because as you can see, you need to stay in that top four if you want to keep your spot going into next season. It certainly promises to be a fun run down the stretch here in season two. Now, next week in Series E is going to be Rice Krispies Treats Week. Team Razor is certainly going to be hoping to go for the three-peat on Tuesday night and keep things rolling. That would certainly be a huge boon to pushing them into the top four. Meanwhile, Rice Krispies Treats is trying to get out of the bottom of the standings. They've had a rough go so far this season, but they did finish Pro Night this week with a win. Is that going to be enough for them to build momentum like we saw Team Intel able to do in their sponsor week? You'll have to find out and tune in Tuesday and Wednesday night this coming week to see all of the Series E action. Now, me personally... If I got to pick a team that I think is going to pop off next week, I'm taking Team Pop-Tarts. They've been extremely consistent all season. I think Farmer Lucas has got them in prime position to try and take the title this season. We'll see if week number nine is where they really take a step forward. Now, in ALGS news, the last chance qualifiers did just finish off for the ALGS 2021 championship. We did see our friends over at Lonely Fans making it through there, so congratulations to them. Meanwhile, when we look at our partnered squads, we did see Intel, Cheez-Its, Rockstar, Pringles, and Applejacks all making it into the ALGS championship. So definitely keep an eye on those squads. This is what they've been preparing for all year, and we're looking forward to seeing how they perform this coming June. Now that does it for our Series E and ALGS news. We're going to go to a short break, but when we come back, I was able to sit down with Hodzik of Team Liquid to talk everything about Series E. You're not going to want to miss it, and then make sure to hang out afterwards as we will have our heat map segment tracking everything we saw from Team Intel on this week's Pro Night. I wasn't born in the spotlight. Nah. I'm fine had a grind to shine like a star on a hot night. And something about the struggle now resides in my muscles. And every trial and trouble helped to hang my hustle. Real rock stars don't chase the spotlight, it chases them. flavors make new ones how much do you think pringles paid these people hardly anything hey you guys want to stack different pringles flavors to create new flavor combos here i'll, I'll go first pizza barbecue and jalapeno the spicy barbecue pizza stack get him <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 grandpa what's going on 
Pringles. We're trapped in a Pringles commercial. They must have taken us in our sleep. How can we get out? We can't, Summer. They warned me this would happen, and I didn't listen. Stack Pringles make endless new flavors. Stack Pringles to make new flavors. Make endless new flavors. Barbecue, maybe sour cream and onion equals a three layer dip stack. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Gay So here. Welcome back into the GVO Zone in the eSports Arena, Orange County studio. Shout out to Jamerson. Great work on the day from him, and we definitely had a lot of exciting games. But I am now joined by Hotsik of Team Liquid. Uh, Hotsik, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Uh, please, you know, introduce yourself to the uh, the viewers at home. Uh, my name is Hotsik. I am a pro player slash coach for Team Liquid. Um, been competing in this game since day one. All right. Well, happy to have you here. Appreciate you taking some time uh, out of your day. I want to talk Series E with you here. So I really want to just ask for you uh, 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 at the start, what are your kind of general thoughts on Series E? Your thoughts on the format, the stream, the league, and how things have gone so far through uh, a two and a half or a season and a half here? Um, I definitely think it's a really cool way to, uh, I would say like the only other real thing we have is like uh, AOGS and then GLO every now and then throws like a pretty big tournament. So it's a nice way to I guess, keep the uh, competitive scene on its on its toes, as well as uh, supporting the, like, the tier two scene as well, you know, giving players that might not have had a chance before uh, to get noticed by like a team or something to give them a chance and a platform to compete in. Certainly one of the things I, I enjoy as well, giving a platform for those tier two players. Um, when you look at the format and kind of what we're doing here as a whole, what improvements would you maybe like to see going into the future, maybe into season three? Um. It's tough to say because I feel like uh, as as long as you know, as long as the, the sponsors are rolling in and helping these teams out, uh, try to like you know chase their dream, I, I feel like there's not much really more that needs to be done. Really, I mean, it's just uh, maybe if anything, I know the pro players probably won't like it, but if you want to like mix it up, maybe be a little bit different, maybe throw in some other maps, uh, maybe some maybe do some arena tournaments or something uh, in the future. Who knows? That is interesting that you hit on those arena matches as we will get uh, some interesting new content coming with Season 9 next week. What are your kind of initial thoughts on the arena mode? And do you feel like that's going to be something that pushes into the competitive scene here as we get into Season 9? Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I had a blast playing it. It's, uh, I'm not sure if it'll like overtake the VR completely. I, I have my doubts about that. But I think it's going to be a nice little break for a lot of people that, you know, love everything about, you know, the, everyone, I think everyone loves the movement and the gunplay in Apex. Uh, some people, and there's probably a lot of people that just hate the whole battle royale aspect of it. And I think it'll be a nice little way for them to enjoy that without having to be frustrated about not getting, you know, getting a, a P20 while the other guy gets a Spitfire. So uh, it has potential. I think it may make for some great content tournaments, you know, uh, throwing out, doing like a, an OG style tournament with all the top teams and, you know, just seeing what comes out on top. I think it can be really cool, really good content. Definitely looking forward to it here at Esports Arena. We were super excited uh, to hear about that. Now let's look at the North American scene, which you were obviously uh, embedded in here. We've been seeing uh, the scene grow more and more. We got more orgs coming in. We just saw uh, Renegades get in on the fun, signing their brand new roster who was actually able to compete tonight. Uh, what are your kind of thoughts on the progress of the NA scene? And then do you feel like Series E has had uh, an, an effect on that and maybe a, a positive impact? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's obviously, you know, if we're looking at like a graph of the NA scene. It's, uh, it's on an upward trend. Uh, it would, it was looking pretty dark for a little bit early on in Apex. You know, a lot of orgs got in, a lot of orgs got out. So it's nice to see that we're on the flip side of that now in a lot of orgs, you know, Space Station as well, Space Station Gaming coming in as well. Uh, it's really good to see because, uh, there are a lot of really talented players in NA, uh, that don't, that aren't getting those chances. So I think it's really cool and good for them and good for the game overall. And, um, yeah, I mean, these series, I think anytime you have any kind of competitive format, especially where there are sponsors involved um, and, and prize money, you know, seeing to have to be able to quantify how well teams are playing is always going to look good, especially when orgs are looking to get into the game. So uh, I, I can't imagine these series is, is hurting that in any regard, you know. Yeah, more eyeballs, more opportunities, certainly going to help out a lot of these squads. Hotsick, I appreciate you joining me today. Best of luck to you and the entire Team Liquid squad in the future. So uh, a pleasure, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me.
All right, folks, we're back. I do want to give one final thank you to Hodzik. Appreciate him giving some of his time to us here at Series E and sitting down to have a great discussion with me the other day. Now it's time for our heat map segment, and we followed Team Intel this week through a very impressive performance on Pro Night. Let's see all of the action. All right, we kick off with Game 3 here from Team Intel, dropping on countdown and it's a pretty quiet early game from them they work their way up just around skyhook they head over to survey camp as that first ring closes and it keeps them in the northern area of the map they then work their way back over to skyhook and then finally get their first fight of the game just north of skyhook here where they run into clg and we join Team Intel here with great positioning on top of the train station here in the northern part of Skyhook. And it gives them just such a great view of all of the teams in the area. Bubble down to buy them a little bit of time, but Panders with this Spitfire just doing so much good work, applying pressure to CLG who's already fighting with Team Pringles. Now Team Intel staying in Skyhook after fighting with CLG, now run into Team Liquid and Team Razor to close out the game. And Intel once again holding this high ground on the train station, looking for the push on Liquid. And they do a great job here taking out Team Liquid, but the problem is they take too much damage themselves, and then we get to see Team Razor with the perfectly timed third party showing up to ruin all of Intel's fun. Intel goes down and Razor closes out the game on top. Now over to game five, once again kicking off at countdown. Team Intel gets their drop and then they work their way down to the southwest where they run into Team Rockstar just south of Lava Fisher. And Intel with great control of this building as the defensive bombardment comes down and they're just trying to control this door, gate Rockstar from being able to push in on them. But Panders taking so much damage and then Metro here to follow is such a tough spot, but a well-timed black hole just blocks Rockstar from pushing right away. And then Metro with a sliver of health here, able to grab the triple kill. Great work from Intel. After getting that wipe on Team Rockstar, Team Intel then work their way down to the south and start hanging out in Thermal Station where they do eventually run into TSM. Now down in Thermal Station, TSM has just finished a fight and the timing is perfect from in Team Intel. They're looking for the third party and the wipe here as they push up on to this building that TSM is holed up in. The one problem is choosing the wrong building TSM does get enough time to get some healing out, so it does make things a little more difficult for Team Intel as Panders just wants to get in here and ha having to deal with this Watson makes it so much more difficult to entry into this building. But great shots there, able to take out the Watson ultimate, but things start to go awry as Metro goes down and Panders soon to follow, but luckily they got six here for the clutch. The 1v1 shot there with the EVA 8 closes it out. Now after taking out TSM, Team Intel works their way down to the southwestern corner of the map where we get a bit of a stalemate here between Team Intel, Team Pop-Tarts, and CLG, but we finally get the fight that closes out game five. Now Team Intel hold the best positioning for this fight. Team Pop-Tarts has to push down the hill and CLG has been forced out of the building and that's the key here. In this final three, Intel wants to be the last one into this fight because it means that Team Pop-Tarts and CLG have already done work on each other's health bars and Panders and the squad do great work here. The final player dies to the zone and Intel comes out as the Apex champion. Now on to the final game of the day here on Pro Night. Team Intel back to countdown to start things off. And they don't change things up whatsoever in game six as they head down to train yard to third party flashpoint. And nothing fancy from Team Intel this time around. This is just a straight up fight with flashpoint. Panders with great use of the gravity lift gets Intel in position for this fight and Metro just holding down the roof with that Spitfire makes it easy for Intel to get these knocks and finish off this final member here of flashpoint to take the fight. 
Now, after that wipe of Flashpoint at Train Yard, it's a quick rotation down to Harvester, where Team Intel runs into Team Nestle Splash. Another pretty straightforward fight here from Team Intel. Dealing with something a little unusual is they actually have to fight against a Rampart, which we don't see very often. But the problem for Team Nestle Splash is Team Intel just not missing their shots today. They're able to get the clean wipe here on Nestle Splash and continue this aggressive push. After finishing off Team Nestle Splash, Intel heads their way to the southeast where they run into Team Cheez-Its over at Sorting Factory. Now, Panders taking an Arc Star to the face is not the ideal start to this fight, but the Bubble Shield does buy a little bit of time, but Team Cheez-Its are strong here. And the problem for Intel is two knocks put Panders in a 1v1, but having gotten the battery off, he's able to clutch it up here with the Mastiff to keep Intel alive. Now from Sorting Factory, Team Intel makes their way over to the tree where they run into their nemesis on the day, KSZ. Now Six trying to hold this door to keep KSZ out, but with that Thermite, all things go wrong and Six just gets absolutely melted here and that is the signal for KSZ to push. No black hole available means that Panders gets taken out quickly and Metro soon to follow as Intel falls to KSZ. All right, awesome to get to break down everything we saw from Team Intel this Wednesday night on Pro Night. Very impressive performance from them, and we'll have to see if they can learn from what they did this week and continue the roll towards the top of the standings. That's going to do it for me and everything here at Final Circle, though, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure to tune in next week. We've got Tuesday and Wednesday night for Rice Krispies Treats Week here on Series E. You're not going to want to miss all of the action. And if you can't wait and need more eSports Arena stuff before we get there, don't don't miss this Sunday's third qualifier for our Kellogg's 25K Halo 5 tournament. It promises to be a blast. I'll see you later. Hey, shake it, kiddo. Hmm? <laughs> Love Dad. Whoa. Kellogg's Rice Krispies treats. A little love when it's needed. It's Kellogg's. Fruit Loops. Apple Jacks. Corn Pops. Tiger Paws. Fair Jumbo. Jumbo Packs. Snack Time Heroes. Go take the moment of gold. Cereal. Magnified. Showing up for snacking time. Jumbo Snacks. Snack Time Heroes. Go take the moment of gold. It's Jumbo. It's your snack. Snacks. Cheese it snapped. How's it taste? It's so thin, crispy, and cheesy. And I just want to keep eating it. And eating it. They love them. Snapped. So good we may run out of cheese. Imagine you love frosting and filling. I do love frosting and filling. Oh. Well, imagine if there was a way to enjoy that delicious goodness anywhere, anytime, out of the toaster. Out of the box, out of one of those baggy thingies with nothing but a thin layer of foil between you and... Pasta. <sighs> yes, Curtis. This is a commercial about pasta. I love it. Frosting and filling for your pasta. I like pesto.